when this whole entire segment is sponsored by our friends at Easy Loan Auto Sales, um, who regardless of your credit situation, Easy Loan Auto can help you get behind the wheel and on the road to better credit. All of their vehicles include a two-year, 24,000-mile warranty, and they have three convenient locations in Buffalo, Lockport, and Niagara Falls. They can get you driving today. Go to EasyLoanAuto.com to start your accelerated approval. We all have, we have all their information in our episode show notes here on YouTube or whichever podcasting app or platform you're listening to this show on. And Eric, like we said earlier, this is this is an important player on this team. It is a team that is looking to win the AFC East and make a run to a Super Bowl. And in theory, to do that, you need your best players playing at a high clip and at a high level. And overall this year, we've seen inconsistencies from Diggs, but really these past several weeks, like I said, really the month or so. And then when you start to juxtapose it with performance in previous years, especially within certain aspects, some things start to come to the surface. That's where the detective work came in for this episode with the <laughs> yeah. advanced metrics and the film um, to really kind of put together an answer in terms of what's going on with Stefan Diggs. Yeah, and let's start off with the whole injury theory because I just don't personally see um, the benefit of them hiding an injury that Diggs has suffered. Again, I the way I differ, differentiate injuries, it's whether you're injured or you're hurt. Everybody's hurt this time of the year. Yes. If you're injured... Mm -hmm. You're you're seriously hampered. Um, whether you try to play through it or not, that's one thing. I just don't see why they would hide an injury, an injury to a player. Now, is he banged up? Yeah, he could be banged up. I mean, again, initially I was told he's not injured, and this was a few days ago. He's not injured. Um, the issues aren't because of that. But then today mm -hmm. I did hear, and I couldn't confirm it with anyone else quite yet, that it was an abdomen issue, and maybe it's an abdomen mm -hmm. issue. Whether that's because of the back issue he had earlier mm. in the year or not, I don't know. And, and again, I hate to even speculate about what I've heard or what I was told or, you know, any rumors you see on social media because mm -hmm. we like to stick to the stats and the film, <laughs> all right? And so that's what we're going to do in this segment. So with that all aside, you know, and you watch some of this film, um, what we're going to try to break down is some of the issues that, again, we we may see in film or some in the stats in we talked about in the, the last time we broke down digs about how defenses were defending him different. That's actually true. Defenses are defending him different. We broke that down in the last uh, time we broke him down. So the other thing is, okay, well, if they're defending him, if they're rolling safeties to him, if they're taking away his inside leverage, well, Brady and the offense need to get the ball to other playmakers. And I mean, for the most part, we've been praising Brady for doing that from mm -hmm. day one, the day when he took over the first game, he took over. He did a good job of doing that, more so than I think Dorsey did. Yeah, it's something, again, like you said, we talked about it a bunch. It almost seemed early in the year, and especially under the under the Dorsey regime, that they were forcing it to digs early on, and it didn't allow anyone else to establish a rhythm or get things going, whether it was from a pass perspective or from the run game. And so we really enjoyed when Dorsey started to do that, and then he went out and Brady came in and took over, and we started to see you know, more of a presence, especially from the running backs in yes. the pass game. And again, it's it's okay if Stephon Diggs isn't putting up these otherworldly numbers and the offense is still humming. Like, who cares how you score, like, 30 points if you're scoring 30 points? Like, do it consistently. It is what it is. But the issue now is we're starting to see that sluggishness from the offense, and it's mm -hmm. coming in conjunction with, with the sluggishness from Stefan Diggs. And that's where it's starting to get troublesome a little bit because you are getting this tremendous all pro player who is being almost kind of iced out of the offense based on what the defense is doing, but also based on some things that are happening from the offense that they're creating. And it's, it's really reflected in the numbers, which Eric, yeah. as you pull up this graphic here are legitimately staggering. It just, it's funny because it's such a fine line between success and failure. You're going to see that in the film because we're going to compare some s similar routes from this season versus last season and why they're not working for digs. Um, it's such a, a fine line and how that can really change a narrative. Um, that's what that's one thing I want you guys to keep in mind as we're going through the film. And as you said, the stats, um, we're going to break down some of his, his stats when you're talking splits from Dorsey to Brady. We're going to break down some uh, stats from 2022 versus 2023. So let's start with targets per game. They're down. I mean, that's you can't deny that. They're down. Weeks 1 through 10, he was getting 10.2 uh, a game. And then weeks 11 to 17, 8.3. Now, explosive plays of 16 air yards or more. Weeks 1 through 10, 19 explosive plays. Uh -huh. Since Brady's taken over, three. That's a big one, Anthony. That's, <laughs> that's a big one. Might want to hold a, on to that one. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's that's significant. Just uh, Just a little bit. And again, we're not... 
you're sitting there, granted the bye week came in week 13, but you're still looking at games in week 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, sure. and 17. So that's six games right there. And he's averaging, or not even, at, yeah, he's averaging like 0.5 explosive air yard plays per game. Like that is, that's a far cry from where he was at under Dorsey. Yeah. And, and so, you know, it led to me going down the rabbit hole of like, okay, well, what's different? Like what routes are different? Maybe they're run, they're not running him in these or what's not connecting. And so then I looked at some of the, the two that stood out were the go routes and the post routes. So let's mm -hmm. look at the numbers from 2022 when we're looking at the go routes and how they compare to 2023. So go routes in 2022, he had eight receptions for 276 yards, four touchdowns and a 1.17 EPA per target. Now, Look at 2023, one reception for 17 yards, one touchdown, a 0.13 EPA per target. So that's a huge difference. You're not getting those go routes. We're going to look at some of that film and, and see what stands out and why they're not working. But that right there on go routes is it's big because, again, the Bills don't have many other vertical threats besides Diggs. And you saw he tore it up last year on those go routes. Gabe Davis does a pretty good job in both of these areas mm -hmm. as well. But again, your alpha, you want to see him be able to get down the field on those explosive plays. And he's not doing it overall this season when it talk, we're talking go routes. But overall, again, at explosive plays on of 16 yards or more in air yards, um, as you see, since Brady's taken over again, down, just way down. Yeah. And I, I think if, if, you know, everybody who's, you know, listening to this episode, whether live or not, if you're sitting back and you're kind of playing Stefan Diggs 2022 highlights in your head, Think how many of them are him going up the sideline and catching some kind of like 20 or 30 or 40 yard pass or right. housing, you know, something on a post route or housing one of those go routes and getting the touchdown or just making these big plays. Think about all the big Stefan Diggs plays that happened in 2022. And a lot of them came on goes and posts. And Eric, again, that's what you said, like kind of led you down the rabbit hole in this conversation, especially when we were talking earlier before uh, going live here. And it's just it's such a significant difference. And just to put everything into perspective, like on those go routes and post routes in 2022, the 1.17 EPA per target, the 1.46 EPA per target, that means that those plays are averaging over one like expected point added per target. Yeah. That is absolutely tremendous. That means each one of those routes are literally adding a point onto the Bills total for a game from an expected standpoint. That is tremendous. But even if you don't know that or don't recognize that, just seeing the drop, like again, from 1.17 to 0.13, the post routes is crazy too. 1.46 yeah. to negative. So, and we're going to show you why it's negative. Yes, You're going to show because like the, the two receptions for 73 yards and one touchdown this year, um, obviously the, the quantity is low, but we're going to show you what has happened on some of those post routes because last year, three, he had three receptions for 116 yards and one touchdown. And as you said, a 1.46 EPA per target. But like when I popped on that film and, and browsed how the defenses were playing him, how he set up some of those routes, whether it goes or posts or how the scheme and play set him up. It's interesting to see why they worked last year and maybe didn't work this year. That's going to be the fun part of the film when we get there. Absolutely. And th that's where the metrics and the film really come in together. And, you know, the the metrics quantify what we're seeing on film and the film kind of puts those breadcrumbs together to really be able to see everything and put that holistic picture together. Because, you know, whether you're looking at these numbers on this chart here or even just going through overall like EPA per target, like weeks one through 10, Stefan Diggs had a 0 0.2 far, two, 0 0.24 EPA per target overall, which was tied for 35th out of 126 uh, players with at least 30 targets. Weeks 11 right. through 17, he's at negative 0 0.19, which is tied for 104th out of 124 players with at least 21 targets. So you see those numbers from an overall standpoint, and then it's like, okay, well, how can we dig further? Like, what's going on? Is it coverage related? Is it offense related? Is it Dorsey? Is it Brady? Is it Diggs? Is it success for someone else? Is it being dictated by the defense? Is it specific routes? And that's what led us to the the impact or the lack mm -hmm. thereof of explosive plays for Stefan Diggs in 2023, especially versus 2022. But even more so within 2023, the difference with that performance in that area or that arena under Dorsey versus under Brady, like you have highlighted here. Yeah. And and so again, I, I did it by the last few seasons. And if you look at, you know, EPA per target, 
at 0.13 this year on plays. Again, explosive plays, uh, according to True Media, is 16 air yards or more. So it's a little different than what PFF does at 20 plus yards. So 16 air yards or more, you can see uh, a 0.13 overall EPA per target, 12 receptions out of 35 targets for 284 yards and two touchdowns. He's only got 11 explosives on these on this filter. And then the explosive plays per target percentage is 31.4%. If you look last year, he was at 52.4%, which is obviously really high. And then the year before that, 2021, it was at 36.4. So more of the same ballpark as this year. And then 2020, he was up at 50%. So last year was a little different, right, though, Anthony? Because that injury kind of prohibited him from throwing accurately and quantity-wise, volume-wise, underneath a little more. It seemed... The rumor was he he could uncork it deep a little more, a little easier without really hurting himself. So maybe that's part of the you know factored in into that. I don't know. No, yeah, that, that, that that's that piece we talked about it on the show, and it had been talked about a little in the media. I always gave credence to that when I jacked up my shoulder really bad when I would throw a football or a baseball as I was starting to come through with it. Like I couldn't, I it would be hard for me to try and throw like a 10 yard like fastball or like with a football or a baseball, but I could uncork it 50 yards deep and just throw it because the angle put less mm -hmm. stress on my shoulder, that difference in torque, the difference in launch point and all that stuff. And it made sense given um, Josh Allen's like average up the target down the stretch last year, just increasingly crazy. literally yeah. like it was at one point, I think like 15 yards, like yeah. average depth the target, like, and it just kept going up each game and each game. And so many people were like, what the hell? Like, what's Dorsey doing? And part of it was what Allen was comfortable throwing. And Allen was looking to make a lot of those throws himself. And Diggs happened to be the benefactor. He, he did. I mean, yeah. I remember correctly, we were breaking it down almost every week in the film room, especially when they played the Dolphins, because they had a lot of those big time mm -hmm. throws against them. And Allen was like 2% higher in big time throws than the second place guy. Again, maybe that was injury and how aggressive Dorsey was. And as you said, Diggs was the benefactor. He had 22 plays of 16 air yards or more last season. He's only got 11 this year. And if you break it down by the splits of Dorsey and Brady, he had nine of those explosives under Dorsey, only two under Brady. And it, it just these numbers, whether you're looking at the receptions, the yards and touchdowns, they were just so much higher prior to this year. So uh, again, we're going to try to get to the bottom of that tonight with the film, but it's pretty obvious that, the explosives are down and they are, uh, Steve mentioned it. They are down overall across mm -hmm. the league, mm -hmm. but this is rather drastic compared to relative to the league. Yeah. It's just that impact. And, and we've seen, we talked about it with, you know, some of the issues with Allen and the offense under Dorsey, like they were ultra efficient, almost to the point of it being detrimental to the overall offense because they were lacking that, variance to the offense those high variance those explosive plays and they were operating efficiently but they were taking so much time up from the clock and then they only get a field goal or they turn over the ball and it actually hurt your opportunities to put up points and just seeing that consistently kind of being reflected or kind of rearing its head I should say again now this year um with you know the offense under Joe Brady and what we're seeing with Allen it just it, it continues to provide questions or bring up questions. And that's where we come in to try and provide these answers. Cause again, it's an important piece as this team again, like has to beat Miami this week to win the division and then yeah. playoff start, hopefully next week for the Buffalo bills. Like this is something you would like to have course correct, or at least know what the problem is or what's going on, you know, with your two best players on that side of the ball. Yeah. So let's dive into some of the film again, looking at 2022 and 23 films. So let's start with the post route. So as we, talked about in that last segment post routes last year he had three receptions for 116 yards and one touchdown and a 1.46 epa per target this year two receptions for 73 yards and one touchdown a negative 0.12 epa per target and we're going to show you why that is so bad this year so 2022 film titans big post coming you're going to see the titans roll into a, a two like a two high shell a robber a two or three robber and you get the big post from Diggs. you get one hell of a throw from Josh Allen and Diggs reels it in on the back end there. Very nice work on that play. Obviously a big play, one of uh, three big plays. One or one of, I'm sorry, yeah, one of three big plays on posts, and you see them connect. Well, look at this play this year. They uh, try to run a similar type play. This is Diggs right here. 
He's running that Dino post, that big post. You get the damn near same coverage right here with mm -hmm. that robber in the middle right there. Damn near the same coverage. What happens? Diggs gets inside leverage, but the ball kind of sails a little bit. You see Diggs has separation, but Josh kind of throws it a little, under throws it a little bit. And I will say the corner made a freaking awesome yeah. play on this ball. But once again, the play was there. They completed it in the Titans game in 2022, but they were not able to complete it here. And, and that's kind of where the risk reward aspect of going deep kind of comes into play. Like it is statistically harder to complete these throws downfield because they are further downfield. And it is statistically and logically harder to complete a farther pass than it is a shorter one. But these are the plays that we saw Allen hit with more regularity in 2022. And that Titans example is a good one versus, you know, again, this one in the Jags game, like you said, very similar coverage structure, very similar route concept idea. And it's just Allen not hitting it. And this, I think, goes into some of that larger conversation with what we've seen with Josh Allen this year. Just these little, these little intricate detail pieces that are off. It's his footwork or his arm angle, or this ball is just slightly underthrown, or it's a little too far out in front. And his numbers overall have uh, you know, he's taking less attempts over 20 yards this year yeah. from a percentage standpoint. He's got a lower completion percentage. He's got, you know, a worse interception to touchdown ratio this year than he did previously. So he is, again, he's had a lack of sharpness overall in his game this year, but it's really reflected in these downfield throws. And Diggs has been, you know, that int integral part both last year and this year. And thus, if Allen's struggling with these deeper throws, Diggs is the one who is struggling along with him. Right. And so here is uh, the Packers footage. Uh, from last year, Diggs is in the slot this time, but once again, big post. Want you to keep an eye on the safety I have circled right here, and how this route by McKenzie kind of holds him, because that's going to really set up the next play. So you see that big post right here, you know, Dino post where he gets vertical. He's going to stem outside to get this guy to open, and then get back across the face to the middle of the field. And this throw was just bonkers from Josh. Pressure under duress, and he drops it in the bucket <laughs> over the middle on that big post. Once again, a big play down the field on a post route. And these are the ones that this is where I think some of the toughness comes in, in terms of how we approach like inaccuracies from Josh Allen at certain times. Cause this throw, he's got pressure bearing down on him. This is a hard throw. He stands in the pocket and he makes this throw. If he doesn't make the throw, then it was like, well, he had like pressure in his face and it's well, yeah, but he made, he's used to making these types of throws, yeah. making these types of plays. So if we're going to praise him, when he does it, we also have to be somewhat critical of him when he does not. And if you have, as you have highlighted there uh, up top with that far side safety, yeah. he's getting held by that route from McKenzie coming across, like he said. So he kind of nails down on McKenzie and it's just that brief little bit. And that helps Diggs get over the top. There's all that space from the Bills logo to the numbers and the far hash. And Allen can put this ball. He could even put this ball more yeah. towards the numbers and kind of yeah. lead him further. But Diggs has such good separation that it ends up not mattering. So, like, if we really wanted to be uber hypercritical, we could be like, well, he could actually have pushed this ball out to the far numbers a little bit more uh, to give Diggs some space. But this is still a wildly awesome and tremendous throw off of a really good route. Again, that Dino post, Diggs is one of the best at it in this game. But again, another example from 2022 of Josh Allen connecting downfield with Stephon Diggs and Diggs being, you know, the one who benefits. All right. And here's a bad decision on the very same type of play. A big post from Diggs right here. And look at the backside safety. I have him circled there because watch the route from Sherfield. That route, unlike the McKenzie route, doesn't hold that backside safety. Now, mm -hmm. again, we when we broke this down in week one and, and even a couple weeks after, uh, this little post route from Sherfield, I don't know if that's the depth he's supposed to be running it at. I don't know. Maybe he's supposed to go a little deeper to kind of influence this, this safety. My guess is this is schematic. This is a, a Dorsey issue here. He didn't. It wasn't a good route. Uh, to implement here if you're trying to hold the safety. Even just a goal route up here would have held that safety and mm -hmm. opened up the middle of the field. But either way, Josh did not sense Whitehead getting back here over the top. Now, unlike that Packers play, he has that backside safety in the play now. He shouldn't be making the throw. And I think it was a, a down and distance thing where, um, what down was it? Second down and long Second here. Second and very long. Yeah, yeah, very long here. So, Again, this is just a bad decision. Yes, there was some pressure in his face, but either way, he didn't see this guy. He did not account for this guy, and he throws it deep, and it gets intercepted on a big post. Again, that worked in prior years, 
But on this play, you can see it's intercepted by that backside safety. And and so this is one now that is slightly different because some of the issues that we've seen with the struggles with the downfield throws from Allen have been some are just like, you know, ball placement or accuracy or mechanic, you know, kind of related. Right. This one, he gets pressure directly in his face. It influences his ability to kind of get really in proper body position and sling this thing downfield. Quinn and Williams gets pressure right up the gut and gets mm -hmm. into Allen and influences this throw. But the bigger takeaway is Allen not seeing that defender deep, like not seeing Whitehead. The issue isn't so much like the throw itself from a mechanical or actual standpoint. It's more of the Eric, like you're saying, like that decision standpoint. Mm -hmm. And we, again, we broke it down in the Jets game and then we did it however many weeks later when we went through all of his turnovers and kind of played yeah. that game in terms of like assigning yeah, blame yeah. to Allen or Dorsey or kind of both or whatever um, that third category was. It's that decision piece. And that's coming through as well with overall not just with the deep ball but again we're having this specific conversation that's where it is so if you're having struggles decision making wise but also having struggles mechanically or from a throwing standpoint whether it's footwork arm angle or there is some injury involved shoulder finger whatever the hell it's all culminating in again impacting not just Allen on the offense, but Stefan Diggs specifically because he is the one that is getting these routes. He's the one that eats off of these in previous years, especially last year, and he's not now. Yeah, and here's one he actually did complete under center, 48 yard completion of Diggs. Dino Post at the bottom, deep in breaking route from Davis from the top of the screen. And this should be a touchdown. This should be a touchdown. Oh. He Underthrows it here, brings Diggs back. He has to high point it to reel it in. 48-yard gain, awesome. Like, that's the type of explosive plays they need, especially when you're backed up like that inside your, you know, your 10-yard line. Awesome play, but something that, you know, it's a play that Josh and the offense left some meat on the bone. And this is one that generates a ton of EPA. Again, EPA is expected points added. The expected points for this Bills drive, considering they're starting at their own 10-yard line, isn't going to be very high, but this throw from Allen to Diggs puts them now over midfield and into Jags territory, roughly at the Jags, like 43, 42 yard line. So this play is going to generate huge expected points because you've gone from your own 10 to all of a sudden in Jags territory. So this one play generated a ton of expected points and it's, which is awesome. It's also a good completion, huge gain first down, get backed up out of the, you know, you know, shadowy or goal line Diggs does a great job with his route, the safety, uh, Mr. Rayshon Jenkins, who we have highlighted there. He drives on that out from yeah, and, Austin Knox and Allen influenced that, right? He kind of, yep. you know, pointed his shoulder over there. It kind of gave him a little shoulder fake and it influenced Jenkins to jump that deep outbreaking route from Knox. Yeah. And it, so everything like really works. The only thing that doesn't work here is the final throw. Allen has time. There's a good pocket. I know the defender kind of gets his hands up into Allen's face right as he throws it. So mm -hmm. maybe if you really wanted to give Allen every single benefit of the doubt, maybe your conversation there is okay as you know, the defender gets into his face. Maybe it makes Allen change his arm angle. And so he puts more air under it and he can't, you know, lead digs over, uh, you know, up the field more. If you really wanted to go that way, that's fine. But at the end of the day, again, the conversation is centering around Stefan Diggs and the changes in that production. That is one there that all intents and purposes should have been a 90 yard touchdown. If yeah. we're really like rating it, 100%. like there was, there was so much space. He could have even underthrown it period. And Diggs still could have caught it and housed it. He underthrew it so significantly that it was only, you know, that play to the 40, that should have been a house call. Yeah. And here's another an under center play action play. And, you know, we're talking explosives, and you saw it in the graph. We just didn't get to it. We're going to try to get to it at the end when we're talking play action and how the Bills aren't running as much play action. That is one thing they need to do, and especially if you're talking about getting the digs. Well, in the first Patriots game, they ran the same play that you saw in that Jags game, and what happens on this play? There's some kind of miscommunication. Diggs gets deep on that Dino post, and Josh throws it down the field, and he overthrows Diggs kind of throws him more to the middle of the field. And I understand it's a post and that's uh, essentially where Josh wants to throw it to him. But if he's got both of these guys beat, just lead it up the field to him, you know, let him run under it. But uh, once again, uh, a little miscommunication, a little overthrown and another big play with, with some meat on the bone. Absolutely. And again, it falls into that theme that we're kind of trying to put the whys behind everything of just these little pieces being off. And so you're sitting there thinking like, man, like, Where's Stefan Diggs' production 
like where's it gone this year and yeah. you know is, is he has he lost a step is he not trying is he hurt what's going on he's getting open like he's he's beating guys this is this is very open in today's nfl and this is right. a tremendous screenshot of right where you froze it you can see that ball it's just a little too much towards that hash it had to be a little more towards the numbers than it was towards the hash but again when you are operating in this way, this far down the field, your margin for error is very small because you're pushing the ball that far down the field. It's harder to make these type of completions. We're just used to Allen doing it more the past several years, especially to Stefan Diggs. And this isn't also too like, I want to say this because we all know how much everybody loves Josh Allen. This isn't to, to blame all of Diggs' struggles on Josh Allen. Don't want anybody coming away thinking like, well, they think that Stefan Diggs is struggling because Josh Allen sucks. That's not what it is. But seeing the lack of production, everybody's looking at the raw stats and kind of wondering, you know, hey, what the hell is going on? And not all of it is just because like Diggs has fallen off a cliff. There's all these contextual clues that put it together in terms of why you're not seeing those numbers, why you're not seeing that production. And here is another one from you know yeah. a couple weeks ago that we'll get into that led to a pick from Alohi Gilman from the Chargers. Just another piece kind of putting it all together as you, um, you know, bring up the graphic chart before yeah. we get into that. And, re- and it's, it kind of plays to exactly what you're saying. Like digs the last few weeks and half last half of the year, his numbers are down. But if you look again, if you look at some of the, the raw numbers, you know, not the advanced stuff that we're kind of breaking down right now with one game left, he's got a thousand ninety six yards and eight touchdowns last year. He had 14, 29, 11 touchdowns year before 12, 25, eight touchdowns. Year before that, 15, 35, eight touchdowns. But you can see the yards per reception, it's dipped down a little bit uh, compared to prior years. And again, the EPA per target is definitely down, especially compared to last year. But Mm -hmm. just some of those plays that we just broke down, these are are just the posts. We haven't gotten to the go route yet. (laughs) And look how much they would tip the scale. They would tip the scale to the point where how how much different this conversation or narrative would be if they had connected on some of those on some of those plays. Regardless if it was under Dorsey or Brady, what would the story be then? What would the narrative be then? You know, I, I just, it's such a fine line when it comes to stuff like that, right? Like just a few of those completions, including the one we're, we're about to watch, you know, it really changes the story when you think about it. So here's the one from the Chargers game and all Josh has to do, it's the same concept. You know, you get mm-hmm. this crosser coming right here. You get guys committing to that right there. And then you get the Dino post. I mean, we saw it several times. And Mm -hmm. so, Josh, all he has to do is step up, set his feet. He even admitted this after the game. Set your feet and don't throw it on the run. And you probably have a big completion and maybe even a touchdown with Mm -hmm. with him uh, getting behind Gilman there. And um, uh, just uh, it's so frustrating to watch, man, because (laughs) it's such a minor thing. Just set your feet and unleash that big arm. But instead, it gets intercepted. Again, that's why on these post routes, his the the EPA per target to digs is so much lower than prior years because of plays like this, several interceptions. We've seen two already. Yeah, and that's literally taking points away. Thus, it's going to feel, not even feel, it's going to be that you're having a worse, you know, EPA because you're taking points away. This one really kills me because there is no one back there but Gilman at safety. So even if... Even if this is a horribly inaccurate ball around the, you know, the Chargers bolt symbol at the 50 or more towards like the bottom sideline, he can, there's so much opportunity for him to put this ball anywhere and have it still just be a big gain. Or to your point, could end up being a house call or a touchdown as well. And there, and that's it too. Like he's got the opportunity to set his feet. He just doesn't. And like you said, like Alan even said it um, after this game, this is the fact that he even slings this ball downfield this much on the run thrown back across his body is still even though we're annoyed by it it's still kind of impressive yes but you got to set your it's feet not an easy it, throw but no. this is josh allen like no. come on yeah, we praise like, him all the time for these kind of throws if you're gonna praise him for being a unicorn you have to also be critical of him when he acts like a unicorn and does unicorn things that he either fails at or are unnecessary <laughs> and this one is unnecessary he did not have to keep staying on the run he could have set his feet he could have got his feet underneath him and had a proper base the protection was there the space was there, but again, putting it in that perspective, Eric, this isn't, Hey, dump on Josh Allen. We're showing all these to frame where that production from Stefan Diggs has gone in, in prior years. And I think that the one point I wanted to add on it before we get into this next clip, yeah. so many of these, like you said, if he just completes one or two of these, the narrative on Diggs changes, but then mm-hmm. also 
Some of those games change. Maybe that Patriots game is a win instead of a loss. Maybe that Jags game is another win. Then you have a different win-loss record for this team. The fans feel different about this team as a whole. The light or that microscope or that interrogation light isn't on Stephon yeah. Diggs as much yeah. or on this team because the Bills only have four losses or five losses. They're not limping in. They don't feel the sluggish. You're seeing more of that explosiveness. You're seeing more of that sexiness to the offense. So all of these things compound and compound and compound, and that's where you get that narrative or the questions that arise because everything compounds together in, in that way. Yeah, and this is the second drive coming out of halftime. First play of the game against the Patriots, third quarter, so 301 on the clock. First and 10 situation, Josh under center. You get the play action. You get the two crossers, which I love out of 12 personnel. Tight, condensed set here. Yes. You have Davis and, and Kincaid running those crossing routes, uh, almost like a, a drive concept. And then, the again, the post to the top. And Diggs, once again, gets behind that coverage. Why? Because these crossers you know, catch the eyes of all these guys over here, over the middle in the intermediate area. And this, this is a touchdown. This is a touchdown, and it's missed down the middle of the field, once again, a play that, if completed, it changes probably the entire narrative of this game, but also, again, of Diggs and Allen and their connection and ability to hit and connect on plays down the field. And this is another one, too. Like you, If Allen puts this on the money, this is a big touchdown. Awesome. But even if he just puts it out in front of him, like this is still a big play opportunity. Like this, this at the very least, this one and the one against the Chargers, both of these – should have been completions in in the realm of that big completion against the Jags, where it was like, damn, you left some meat on the bone, but it was still like a 50-yard completion, so awesome. But Allen just misses it too far upfield, and that's what you're seeing as well here. Like, even when he hits it, he's not getting everything he can, but more often than not, he's not hitting it. Like, there's, it's not like you left a little meat on the bone here. You left a lot of meat on the bone, and even Allen missing here, it's still so slight. But again, that margin for error is so small. Also, shout out to Ty Johnson on the pass protection there, picking yeah. up Jawan Bentley. Like, I absolutely love that. But again, super far downfield, you know, Allen's just off a little bit. And when you're off a little bit that far downfield, it's going to end up being a miss more times than not because of how far downfield you're pushing the ball. Yeah, and so those are just the post routes. Now, we talked about last year, and it's something that you pointed out uh, when I called you earlier today, how – in 2022, Josh or uh, Josh and, and Diggs really excelled on some go routes. And so we're going to break down some of that film here um, once I am able to pull it up. But last year, like I agree, man, like when I went back through that film, you saw some really big plays, some nice, nice throws, especially with touch um, by Josh on go routes. So they ran it a little different, though. I, I think that has a lot to do with it. Uh, so I want you to pay attention to the route stems of Diggs on this play. So this is against the Patriots uh, from last season. He kind of runs it like an out and up, kind of gets into the blind spot to the top of the screen of that corner. And then Josh unleashes this unreal pass down the sideline right along the boundary. There's not much room for Josh to place that. It leaves him inside just a little bit. And obviously that throw under duress as he's taking a hit was just unreal. This is, again, considered a go route. They got, once again, 276 yards on goal routes last year in, in, what, four touchdowns? That's unreal. Yeah. And that's why that EPA per target for those was, what, 1.17 last year, like literally adding a point on per target. Um, real quick, Eric, before I speak on that, I just want yeah. to bring up the super chat from Carl. Carl's always a consistent supporter of us. We appreciate the hell out of you stopping in again tonight, Carl, watching the show, chilling with us, being here, and then also with the super chat. And Carl says, we did not see creativity out of Dorsey's calls. Brady got creative with Stefan to get him going. Oh, and then mentions, uh, you know, by handing him the, by handing the ball to him in the backfield versus the pass. I did like that call a little shift from Murray oh, and yeah, Diggs. Pretty... they, they run, uh, Spencer Brown on the dart, but then they sure. have that bash back away action. And Stefan Diggs is the back. Like these types of things I think are encouraging from Brady. If that downfield aspect of Stefan Diggs's game is not going Cool. Can you manufacture him mm -hmm. some touch, some touches in other ways? I thought that was a nice little wrinkle and a really good point by Carl of you know mm -hmm. Brady making a concerted effort there to get Diggs the ball and doing it also in a creative way. I think Brady has done a great job. Uh, I agree with Carl of you know understanding defenses are going to do certain things to Diggs, so moving him around is key. Motioning him a little more is key, but also using him to set up others. And I think. Mm -hmm. When we're talking the play action game, we're talking some of those deep shots. I think a lot of what 
uh, we're seeing now as far as play action and vertical and explosive plays, they're using digs to set up others. And I don't have a problem with that, but there's got to be moments where your alpha wide receiver, your best wide receiver is able to get that one-on-one -on -one and win down the field. And they just haven't been connecting uh, under Brady, especially, um, you know, the second half of this season. And so they need to somehow do some things to do that. So uh, the creativity factor, layering plays, making plays mm. look similar, moving guys around, using different personnel. Brady's got check marks in all of those ways, but he has to do a better job. And he admitted this several times in the last couple of weeks. He's got to do a better job of getting digs the ball, not just in explosive plays, but also underneath in that intermediate and short area. Absolutely. Well said, Eric. And well said, Carl. And again, thank you for the super chat and that piece. And yeah, Brady's got to do a better job. And then again, like when it is there, like we need to see Allen be able to hit it like he did in that previous clip at the end yeah. of 2022. It's so funny to see that play and then be like, oh yeah, this dude had a hurt shoulder and just watching him on yeah. court, like a 50 yard dot. Yeah. And then this one was from uh, what the first Jets game where he, he did this on sauce kind of yeah. similar, like he's going to run like a speed out and then gets up the, up the this numbers. was like, this was like the very first offensive play of the game. Yeah. This was right out of the gate. Yeah. And, and again, uh, another under center play action shot and, and Josh throwing it up to Diggs, and again, kind of under throws, but either way you complete it and you get those big yards, you flip the field early in this game and you get that momentum on the road. And even with it being a little underthrown, it's underthrown to the point where Diggs just has to like adjust his pace a little bit. Whereas the one against the Jags that he underthrew, Diggs literally had to stop and, yeah. and jump up. Like he stopped running completely. But again, like you see Diggs separating that route running a bit. Oh God, it's so beautiful. That yeah. little, that little stutter. And then that move to get inside like sauce is. I know a lot of Bills fans say Sauce just grabs and holds and isn't as good uh, as everyone makes him out to be. He's a tremendous corner. Even as a rookie last year, he was balling out. And Diggs yeah. just makes him look so foolish on that first uh, first play from the game right there and getting open. And again, like Allen hits him so much of these, so much of this offense and the conversation, Brady, Dorsey, Diggs, all of it. So much of it, when you boil it down, just comes down to does Josh Allen hit it or does Josh Allen not? And if yeah. he does, it wipes away so many narratives. And if he doesn't, it creates narratives and creates questions along with it. Yeah, and this play uh, against the Packers was a touchdown against Rasul Douglas. And, and again, this is how they're kind of running their go routes, uh, especially when they would kind of align the digs in a condensed look or a nasty mm -hmm. split. Uh, they kind of ran it almost like an out and up, you know, almost like a hitch and go right there. It kind of dips towards the sideline, but then gets up the sideline right along the boundary. And then a dot from Allen to Diggs for the touchdown. Another, again, classified as a go route, uh, but nice, nice route and throwing Douglas by. Uh, so that he could create even more separation as he got up the sideline there. And this is another one, too, where pressure is bearing down on him and he still makes this throw. So it's 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 again, I know some of the ones we showed that he hasn't hit this year and it's like, oh, well, Allen had pressure in his face or this player here, but he's shown the capacity to make these throws yeah. with somewhat regularity. And he's got a man bearing down literally right in his face. He can't step into this throw. He knows he's about to get popped. Anticipation and look at, here. That's exactly what I was going to say. Look yeah. at when he's throwing it. Diggs is just getting out of that, you know, double move, that sell piece. And he's, you know, if you're even, you're leaving. Douglas is lunging, trying to grab. So not only does he throw this ball with accuracy and with a guy in his face, he throws it with anticipation. And this throw is such a high difficulty, and he nails it. But this year, again, the difference is Allen isn't nailing these throws. Or even when he has time, he's not setting his feet or he's not hitting these throws. He's not hitting these pieces. And, um, it, again, rearing its ugly head, here's one from this year that works out for him. It works out. Yeah, exactly. It's the same type of route, bottom of the screen. Little, again, hitch and go there. I wouldn't call it a double move, but again, they're all classified as go routes, but you can see yep. how he runs his go routes more times than not. Cause again, Diggs isn't a burner. He's no. not a burner. He likes to use that change of pace. Then some of those mm -hmm. moves, some of that unorthodox movement to create separation, to get vertical. And so you see that there nice release here, two way go bursts outside and then a little hitch right there. And then the separation and Josh drops it in there against the Bengals for the touchdown. Yeah, a little uh, stutter go there from Diggs, and this one is this one is perfect. The route from Diggs is beautiful, but look at the throw from Allen. 
there like Diggs doesn't really break his gate, doesn't really break his stride. You have him, uh, you have Allen highlighted there for mm-hmm. him holding that post safety in the middle of the field. He does that so that post safety doesn't cheat over and influence the window to Diggs. And Allen literally where this ball lands for Diggs, it's the same as if Allen just walked it up to him and just placed it into his hands. Like it's mm-hmm. perfect. And it's also if you look at Allen making this throw, like look at the rhythm, the timing, like his body position, everything is even. There's leverage. He's got a base. He drops back. He hops. He steps. He throws. It's him kind of playing in rhythm and playing with good mechanics. And again, we've seen him make tons of amazing throws off platform and with horrible mechanics because, again, he is a unicorn or alien, however you want to label him. But this year we're seeing more of when his mechanics are off slightly with his arm, shoulders, base, whatever have you, we're seeing him not hit these plays. But when he is in rhythm and those mechanics are there, it gives an uptick. Yeah, and here's the same type of route against the Bucks, And the defender does a good job of just driving digs and, and pressing him and almost throwing him out of bounds on this play. So very good physicality from the DB here. And that's kind of been always been the MO against the Bills wide receivers over the years, especially when they had, you know, the smaller guys like Cole Beasley and Sanders is like, Hey, get physical with them. And we're going to see more of that. Uh, mm-hmm. But same type of play. And you see Diggs try to get back in the play and stack the wide res- or stack the DB there, but he's unable to uh, connect with Allen on that play. Yeah. And another one where that connection is just slightly off and it, it's one where if it goes a different way and again, you know, shout out to Jamel Dean for kind of trying to reroute him a little bit there and getting physical and throwing off some of the timing. And that obviously like plays a role, but again, mm-hmm. it's just another one of these where, all of a sudden this becomes, you know, this ball is thrown out of the line of scrimmage at man. the 49. Yeah, it is such a fine line, but this is all of a sudden something that becomes a 25 yard gain that changes EPA numbers and total yardage numbers. And again, directions for the offense and how many people came out of this game upset with how the bills beat the Buccaneers. And maybe that changed some of the changes, some of that narrative. There's so mm-hmm. much, I think also a great kind of connection with the two and like using this as an example of, how fine the lines are in the game of football. Like it is, it it's the Al Pacino speech from any given Sunday. It's a game <laughs> of inches. Like it literally is like any false step here, or if you're a yeah. half second too slow or a half second too early, it can change everything. And again, the further you push the ball down the field, the higher the odds are of you failing because those margins are more difficult or slimmer. The further you go downfield. Yeah. Margins matchups. I mean, that's why football is great. Yes. Last season against the Chiefs, Diggs versus Williams, bottom of the screen. This throw, uh, Josh had one to Gabe Davis on the same type of play. But look at how Diggs takes that outside release on this go route and then stacks the DB. But Josh helps him stack the DB by throwing it inside. Mm-hmm. And so Diggs can create that separation. The ball, kind of like you said on that Bengals play, it really just drops into the lap of Diggs. And he's in there for the touchdown. Like This was a fantastic throw to Diggs against, again, a younger DB. Um, we're mm-hmm. going to see on the next play what happens when Diggs got matched up versus Snead, though. Yeah, he nailed this one to Diggs here. And you, you, know, you alluded the one he also hit to Gabe Davis in this game, like just dropping it in the bucket like we've seen him do. And again, this is this is also like somewhat a high of like a high degree of difficulty given where the corner is, but Allen puts a little more air under it and again drops it into the basket or into the bucket and you see Diggs execute and it's just... Again, these slight timing pieces, these slight mechanical things, all of them um, are just slightly off. And Why yeah, did I was John say, and Dan have the same profile? Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, probably wow. because they're the same person. The it's John the John person stopped commenting, and now the Dan Fouts one did. Um, <laughs> but I appreciate, noticed, yeah, I appreciate the extra view from yes, whether it's a different you. account or a change Thanks in name, whatever. Yeah, yeah we, we love it. Thank you. Yeah. I love We love trolls. Trust me. We, do. <laughs> we don't feed them, but we appreciate their presence. No, so yeah. Thank you so, so much. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Oh, great, great freaking uh, comment there, Omari. Um, awesome stuff. So go route versus the Chiefs again. But this time this year, it's Diggs versus Snead. And Snead is, dude, he is a top tier corner in this league. Yeah, he's and so he good. He played this perfectly. Same route, same location, essentially. Fringe of the red zone, red zone area, single high safety look. Josh goes to him, and, he, and Diggs isn't able to get that inside leverage. Snead even did a great job of turning around and looking for the ball. Um, you know, you probably would have liked to see Diggs kind of jump back and sell it. But yep. either way, this ball wasn't going to be completed just based on the trajectory of that pass. But again, football is a game of matchups and, and timing and rhythm. And you can see how 
this play is so much different than the touchdown that Diggs scored against the Chiefs the prior season. And we talked about it after this game. Steve Spagnolo, the defensive coordinator for the Chiefs, has consistently done, except for literally one game, has done a consistently good job of limiting Stephon Diggs in a Buffalo Bills uniform against the Kansas City Chiefs in terms of receptions, yards, all that kind of stuff. And then you pair it with a legitimately good corner and Legereus Sneed. And this, Eric, this is where we also started to talk about you know, you mentioned that leverage piece. This is where we started to talk about how teams are starting to play Stefan Diggs because they understand the tendency in the offense and what he's trying to run and how they can just use simple alignment and leverage to try and take him away. Exactly. Highlighted the post safety. Yep. Highlighted the post safety um there again and where he is, Mr. Mike Edwards there. And then yeah, Legereus Need is inside. And I, I like your point there with with Diggs. I would like to see Diggs fight through a little mm -hmm. bit more or try and do something. Um to try and draw a call or try yeah. and make this catch. It, it felt totally. like he gave up a little too easily on this, but I also love, I love Sneed turning his head around because the odds of you, you know, getting flagged when you're turning around, going for the ball like that significantly go down. Mm -hmm. But you know, Allen, again, looking at that post safety, he holds him there a little, holds him there enough um, and just tries to get in the bucket, but he can't because of the coverage by Sneed, the leverage. But again, Diggs could have potentially made a play on that. But again, it's all, right. all, so how many things, how many things there did we mention <laughs> that in, in just in that one play with Sneed, right? How many things did we mention that impacted like that completion or that potential throw? And that's what it is. There's so many little things I'm always going to go back to that example when we had Isaiah Hodges on the show and he just catches like a simple like six yard hitch and he had to read like four different things in the blink of an eye to be able to make that catch and make that route and football's a game of inches. It's, it's intricate. It's extremely complicated. That's what makes it beautiful when everything goes right and that's what makes it beautiful to study and break down because they're all there are all these intricacies and these chess match pieces. It's not just the simple yeah, right. go run and I'll throw it to you. And that's why it's a, such a larger conversation and talking point with Stefan Diggs because there's a lot of context to be added to, you know, the quote unquote drop off that we're seeing this year from him. Yeah. So let's get into the play action stuff before we run out of time here. So play action for the Bills. And, and so we're looking at true media here on the screen and you can see the, the rankings. Let me uh, pin them so you can see them at the top. So if you look at dropbacks per game, the Bills on play action, they run 8.6 per game. So obviously that's ranked 19th, as you can see there in parentheses. So I personally would like to see them run that a lot more. Uh, Especially I mean, with the success of the run game. I would yes, love to see them lean into play yes. action even more. And that's not to say, as we always have to add as a disclaimer, <laughs> you don't need to have a good run game to have a good play action game, but the bills do have a good run game. So it and, does and, help. And it helps. Um, <laughs> yeah, it helps. Especially if you're talking about trying to get the ball down the field. All right. Yeah. If you're trying to get the ball down the field, um, look at the bills when they run play action, they are ranked fourth in EPA per drop back at 0.27, especially when teams run rush only four guys, they're third overall in EPA per drop back. Um, it, it just every stat across the board with them when it comes to play action, it, it, it works in their favor. He's completing 70.6%. That's six overall. Um, I mean, why they don't run it more is mind boggling to me, uh, especially if you're trying to create those explosives down the field. Like that is that is one of the first things you do, because if you ha especially if you run it out of 12 oh. and you're bringing those, you're going to have to bring a safety down with how well the bills run the ball, whether they're an 11 or 12 you're going to have to bring a safety down and then things open up down the field. And if not, if they keep two safeties back, when you do run those under center looks, well, guess what? Now you got the intermediate area underneath, you know, like there's so many ways as you're going to see in some of the film, there are so many ways to get the ball into that intermediate and deep area, whether, you know, you run play action out of uh, under center or shotgun. I prefer under center, but um, as you can see, when the bills run play action, they're pretty freaking good at on offense. Yeah, and even looking at that success percentage number there, mm -hmm. they're at 52.9% on a play action, which is fifth best. And just that pisses me off even more. I, I yeah. really thought it would be a 9.5 yards per attempt. Yeah, like I was, yeah, which is six. Like that's Damn, awesome. first down every time yeah. they're under center or oh, under like every time they run play action. That That's a great way to put it like 9.5 yards per attempt. So basically, every attempt is a first down, basically, yeah. like nuts and bolts. And that was part of us being so excited about the Dalton Kincaid draft pick and the 12 personnel. And that's been part of my reasoning for wanting to establish the run mm -hmm. and the bills being able to be a good running team this year, legitimately one of the best in the NFL. 
is because in a vacuum, it's awesome to have a pivot and it's awesome to have a good run game, like in general, but especially even more so if there's bad weather or if there's a team that struggles against the run, so on and so forth. But even more so because then you can use play action to have an easy button and or generate explosives. And if you're a team that's friggin' struggling to generate explosives, especially to your best player, mm-hmm. Eric, this is like, I don't know, like, I don't want to say football one one but kind of like this is elementary. Like, oh, you're running mm-hmm. the ball good? Cool. Let's do some play action. Let's make them spin a safety down. The Bills did it to the Jets a couple years ago, like two years back, like forcing a safety to come down and just explosive, explosive, explosive. And they just have so much offensively set up to be able to do that. And to your point, like I'm surprised we haven't seen more of it throughout the year, but especially Mm -hmm. more so given the sluggishness that we've seen from the offense recently and especially within relation to Diggs. I am very surprised we're not just seeing more play action from them again because – one, it helps, but two, it it works even better if you have a good run game. And the Bills have one of the best run games in the entire NFL. <laughs> this dude changed his icon again. <laughs> like we wouldn't know. Come on. <laughs> I like I love the, how um, you put the belt though. That's hilarious. Right? I like, yeah, yeah, I think that's the old uh, WWF winged eagle championship. Of course it is. You're you're horrible at disguising. <laughs> that's hilarious. That is hilarious. So look at the bottom uh, right graphic play action. All right. And we, I, I broke it up by splits uh, weeks one through 10 and then 11 through 17. And you can see the play action plays per game and the drop off from Dorsey at 9.8 plays per game to 6.7 under Brady. That's unacceptable. That is and it's also funny too, where everybody was flaming Dorsey for not using play action, but right. like no one's really saying it. No, exactly. Exactly. And, and you can see the yardage discrepancies. Obviously sample size has something to do with that. Cause these are raw yeah. stats, but look at some of the, the, the completions of 10 plus yards in uh, under Dorsey, the first portion of the year, he had 36 plays off of play mm-hmm. action that completed 10 yards or more and then 11 of 20 yards or more. And then under Brady, they have had 14 completions of 10 yards or more and then six completions of 20 yards or more uh, uh, when you're talking play action. So again, some of the raw stats um, to kind of set up this quick segment, this quick film segment, but either way, when we're talking even under Dorsey, we wanted more under Dorsey. Well, we sure as hell want much more from Brady. And honestly, this week may be one of the better weeks to do it. I love that segue. Before we get into that, we got a tremendously generous super chat oh my goodness. from Mr. Robert Lee. Yeah, I saw the red and immediately tracked my eyes. Wow. One, Robert's here a bunch, so similar to Carl earlier. Appreciate you for being here and a, a, a consistent supporter and viewer, attendee, however you want to label yeah. it, Robert. But um, the super chat is extremely kind and generous. And then the kind words as well, saying, great job as always, fellas. Go Bills. Um, hopefully there's several more of these. Of course, you know, what you're going to get from us here uh, yeah, in the film going week anywhere. after week. No, we ain't going nowhere. Um, but that's man. I always get taken to like them. Yeah. That, that's humbling. awesome. Robert. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. As Anthony said, thank you. And you know, you, you routinely join us in these film rooms each and every week. And, uh, we appreciate that. And once again, you know, the support from guys like Robert and our insiders, um, even our trolls that are in our comment section, helping our track, uh, helping us to track and <laughs> algor- algorithm wise and on YouTube, uh, we appreciate it all. But Robert, man, very humbling, very thankful and appreciative of uh, your support over the years. And uh, especially tonight in this film room. Absolutely. And I like that. Pi- oh, I got to stop before we talk about the Dolphins piece. I'm going to get to this Dolphins piece because I want to connect and piggyback <laughs> off your point because I'm very excited for it. But we got another super chat. Why Towns King, another consistent yeah. uh, attendee and supporter for us. Appreciate you being here. Thank you for the super chat. Oh, Eric, you'll like this one because you and I both really mm. love Zay Flowers coming yeah. out and he's been balling out a bit for the Baltimore Ravens. Why Towns King says would having Zay Flowers instead of Kincaid have been better for the pass game? This is a fun question. It's, a question. It, it's tough to answer schematically, right. but I guess it really comes down to what you're valuing from a personnel standpoint, because obviously it changes the the formations and alignment and yeah. all that pieces if you're looking at a Kincaid piece versus a Zay Flowers. I mean, I, I will start off by saying I think – you know, um, Zay would have excelled in this offense, especially yes. when you're talking some of those whip routes, some of those in and out routes, multiple breaks and routes. I think he would and have. You excelled. want a guy who can push the ball downfield and, then, and help, and you know, pull after the coverage catch and, yep, as well. Um, so yes, I do think he would have. Um, he would have flourished in the offense. And honestly, I, I, I think in most of my mocks, I had them taking Zay Flowers. Mm. I didn't expect the Bills to take a tight end, especially after they committed. 
um, you know, what they did money wise to Dawson yeah. Knox. So um, I, I do think having flowers would have opened up a lot more different things uh, aside from the personnel. Obviously that was, that's a given the bills wanted to run more uh, you know, that two tight end look and have threats from those in the run and pass game. But I do think that having flowers, I think this offense would have gotten uh, a lot more explosive, um, you know, plays from him. And if it's pretty, you're teeing it up for us because yeah, that's right. this show. So I do think it would have been a little more explosive with Zay in there versus Don Kincaid. I think there's the trade off of to answer the question directly. I think it would have been better similar to your point, Eric, for the explosive nature of the pass offense. Mm -hmm. You're just going to have more ability to stretch the field and really like gash and gouge defenses. I do wonder the impact it would have had on the run game because mm -hmm. the run game has been successful out of these 12 personnel pieces and these multiple tight end looks and what they've done with Kincaid. So I think, I don't know. I mean, actually, if you're going from an analytic standpoint, the trade-off would be you'd rather have the better pass game than have the better sure. run game. But the Bills run game has been so good um, that I kind of don't mind it, but ex I, I'm in agreement with you, Eric. I think if you got a player, not just Zay Flowers in particular, although him in this question, but like somebody with that kind of speed and that stretch the field ability, run after catch ability, mm -hmm. the ability to make guys miss in open space, it adds a different element, again, schematically, but also structurally and creatively. Uh, creative, creatively. Holy hell, what is going on <laughs> with me? Um, but that's an awesome question, again, for especially for a dude who, you know, you and I were both gushing over him early on in the process. Um, oh, that guy changed his icon again. Hey, fantastic. It's not like we're picking up on it at all. Um, but going with that play action aspect and that, you know, tight end piece. Yeah. I, I want to, I talked about it a bit last night in disguise coverage with all the injuries that Miami has at the second level into their defense. I'm right. really hoping this week they lean into the heavier personnel packages. Those 12 personnel pieces force Miami to have to defend the run or match numbers or bodies in some way from a run game honoring standpoint, and then you get gash them and gouge them with play action, or you take your 12 personnel and you spread it out and you have a two by two gun look. And now you're forcing Duke Riley and maybe even a third linebacker that they put on the field. You're forcing them into coverage and causing all types of hell and right. chaos and all this stuff. And the play action just furthers that even more so in that specific matchup. And it can yield positive dividends. Um, like we're going to show you guys in the film right now. Yeah. And so, Again, getting explosive plays, especially to digs. And I wanted to show some of this because, again, it's not all bad. It, it, we talked about Brady um, and how they, you know, use digs as a decoy to set up others. And I just want to show some of the progression of this season when it comes to under center, when it comes to play action and those explosive plays. So first down play action, watch this second window throw. We're going to we're going to go through a few of these very same plays again to kind of show you uh, the differences. Um, that have, you know, kind of showed up on film throughout the year. So this is the Bucks game. You have a tight formation, Josh Allen under center. And at the top of the drop right now, Diggs, he's not open. You got a mm -hmm. linebacker there underneath, and you have a, a DB over the top. Josh should probably just move on. Where can he go? He can check it right down right there mm -hmm. to James Cook. But what does he do? He moves in the pocket, and then you get the second window throw mm -hmm. to Diggs. So it's Josh saying, you know what? I want to get it to Diggs off play action from under center and he does and that's a 17 yard gain that's one of those explosive plays that they got under dorsey but not necessarily under brady yeah and, and this is an aspect of oh especially going back to the early part of the year we got like off script explosive plays with allen and Diggs. it felt like at least like one a week like jets washington raiders like miami it was like week after week after week and yeah, like this one is nice. Like it doesn't work initially from the structure and the original design, but that off script piece, this has also been an area that's kind of, again, you can't, you can't correct for the off script element, but it is interesting that this is also kind of disappeared from the offense under mm -hmm. Brady, like that off script connection between, um, Allen Stefan Diggs, which honestly has been like a consistent piece throughout. Like usually if things are going off script, he's finding digs. The two are in perfect sync. They know each other. They know what they want to do and they've been able to hit. So this is again, another element that we kind of seen disappear a bit. Right. And so from the giants game, same play, right? Same play under center play action. And digs is right here to the bottom. Nice passing window right here. Mm -hmm. And Josh throws it low in that passing lane. Diggs goes down and gets it. He gets back up and he creates again, an explosive play. This is 19 yards on first down. Something we talked about 
uh, again, when it can, when it comes to play action, Josh under center, finding that window, finding that explosive play to digs. And I say first down and I'm highlighting that because listen to some of these stats, Anthony. So 11 of digs is 22 explosive receptions, which is 16 yards or more this season overall have come off of play action. So half mm-hmm. 50% of his explosive plays have come off of play action. Listen to how this breaks down. Eight of those 11 are on first down, like you Mm -hmm. see here. Three of those on second down. Ten out of those 11 play action plays came in weeks one through ten. Mm -hmm. Ten out of 11 of those play action explosive plays came with Dorsey as the offensive coordinator. So we've only seen three explosive receptions from Diggs since Brady's taken over, and only one of those have come off of play action disappointing (laughs) once again uh like we talked about earlier with that play action piece but again i I think it ties back to that explosive nature that we talked about and pairing it with that run game like if you're sitting there on first down and you have a good run game and you show that run action like you are doing in play action it has that added bonus of making the defense commit and come up Mm -hmm. a little bit and then all of a sudden you've got defenders in or a lack of defenders in vacated spaces you're able to replace them with receivers or tight ends or whoever you want it just it really is again like we said like an, an an elementary way to generate some yardage some chunk play some explosives in your game and the fact that they have a good run game which only adds to the potential bonus of it all it's really disappointing that they're not adding that aspect to the offense right and so this is second and 7 and this is a 17 yard game so this is the charger so this is with brady right and so watch uh you know it's something that we again praise brady and josh at moving on. So initially, Josh is looking to digs to the top of the screen. He's running that blaze out and he does create separation. He's wide open over here. But Josh already moved on. He moved on in his progressions and he moves on. And who's he throw it to? Davis to the bottom and he completes it for a 17 yard gain. So for an explosive, but look at digs, man, on that blaze out. Unlike just kind of like that, uh, that Bucks game where mm-hmm. Josh hung on digs and did whatever he could to get it to digs. Here he moves it on. He moves on. But if he had stuck with digs, this is a big play out here to the boundary. Yeah, this is another one where uh, starting early on in this game, like throughout the first half, there were just missed opportunities, a couple to Gabe Davis, this one to Diggs. And it, it, again, it's just another example of, you know, you're, you're probably not even charting this or thinking of this play in your mind. If you're a Bills fan, you're saying like, oh, what's going on? Like with Stephon Diggs, yeah. like this is a beautiful route. He turns Asante Samuel completely inside out, r- blow, like runs him by, hits that little swim move, hand on the back, runs him by quick, wide open. This is an explosive play like waiting to happen. And it's still, again, that's a good gain to Gabe Davis. Awesome. Second yeah. and seven, you gain 17 yards. Cool. Fantastic. But, oh, and you even see Diggs hopping a little bit. Like yeah. he knows he was open. He knows he had him. And again, this isn't, this is also, Eric, what we've talked about in previous weeks. Like this isn't a bad thing because you got someone else open. And you had a big completion. Awesome. No, 17 and, yards on second and seven. It's just not going to Dicks. And Anthony, we talked about it prior to going live. But so in weeks one through 10, if you look at, uh, you know, 16 plus yards or more uh, per game stats, when you were talking explosive plays altogether, not just play action, Diggs was the leader per game in explosive plays at 1.9 in weeks one through 10 under Dorsey. Who's the leader from 11 to 17? Who, who's your guess on that play? I know the answer, so I don't want to say this it, guy, but it's just, this guy yeah. right here, Gabe Davis. <laughs> So Diggs, again, weeks one through 10, and on a per-game basis, had 1.9 explosive plays in weeks 11 through 17. Davis is the leader at 1.33. And what's the caveat behind that, Anthony? I wonder. I wonder. The the I mean, how many receptions did Davis have in some of these games late in the year with Brady as OC? The fact exactly. that Davis is, is, is leading in this department is mind-boggling. Not even receptions in some of these games under Joe Not Brady. Even, yeah. but no, like no targets, like targets, receptions, yards, like nothing. Like he hasn't been a factor. And it's been a piece that, again, people have talked about, like the lack of production. And then they always juxtapose it with like, then Gabe Davis has like that one breakout game once a month where he's the best receiver on the planet. But it's wild that he is the leader in that category, considering Mm -hmm. he has had three games where he is not even registered on the stat sheet. He is not registering a catch, any yards, anything. And the fact that he's still leading in that advanced metric, again, should really drive home and put into perspective where the weaponry is in terms of the production in relation to Stephon Diggs. Like, getting... (laughs) 
just yeah. becoming behind a dude who had three games in that stretch of absolutely no production is insane. Yeah. And again, it puts it in perspective how they're not getting explosive plays from Diggs when he was at 1.9 in the first portion of the season. And now he's at 0.5. You know, he went from being first overall under Dorsey this season to being uh, one, two, three, fourth behind Davis, Cook, Shakir, and Diggs is at 0.5. Um, and we're talking explosive plays per game. So it just it puts it in perspective. So here's one from Brady's <laughs> first game as the OC. Same play, under center, play action, second and ten. And and you can see what you know how the defenses are are covering Diggs. So you know there's two over the top there. Uh, you have a corner on Davis to the top and someone deep over the top there. And so what does Josh do? He's like, you know what? I'll just take the check down. And we praised Josh for doing this. We praised mm-hmm. Brady for getting Johnson involved off the bench. Essentially, uh, he had you know obviously a receiving touchdown in this game as well. Uh, this is a 15 yard gain. You know, a really nice play off a, a similar play that we've seen in prior weeks. I'm always going to think of Ty Johnson when we talked about going into this game, like, Oh, like maybe there will be, we talked about all like the differences you could see under Brady. And one of them we talked about was like, Oh, personnel. And we'll see like, mm-hmm. who does he want to insert into the lineup more and use more? I don't think anybody would have guessed Ty Johnson. Yeah. And it was just so funny to see the impact he made right away. But again, this is another example, right? Like the difference in that play action piece and difference in a potential option going to Stefan Diggs, but going to someone else. And again, this is not bad. This nope. is a successful play. And this is where, if it's working, like coming out of this Jets game, like who cares? Like the bills, the, the points that they put up, the completion for Allen, you know, on that scene ball to Shakir, all these aspects. You don't care if Diggs isn't putting up numbers, but he's drawing defenders to him because he has that gravity and it opens up opportunities underneath. Look at yeah. all that space yeah. for Ty Johnson. And he's only against CJ Mosley. He's, even if Mosley makes the tackle, cool. You're still looking at probably a six or a seven yard gain. And then it's third and short instead, because there's all that space because of the play action, because of Stefan Diggs, you take a second and 10, you gain 15. Now mm-hmm. you got a new set of downs. And again, that's where things can work. The presence of Stefan Diggs can allow, others to eat the problem again as we've talked about is he's not eating but it also doesn't seem like anybody else is really in the passing offense is struggling as a whole just again from that overall um production standpoint and to kind of drill that home a little bit uh of like the the grander scheme and conversation for the offense uh the last four games for the bills offense their 10th in epa per play their eighth in overall success rate their passing EPA is 14th. Their passing success rate is 24th. Weeks 1 through 10, their passing success rate was 2nd. So they dropped from the first 10 weeks from 2nd to 24th in the last four games. Now, some of that, you know, they've had a tremendous rushing success rate the last four games. 3rd in rushing EPA and 2nd in rushing success rate. So that's been really what's kind of helped this offense get along. But it funnels into that conversation that we continue to talk about where you know Diggs is oh beautiful pulled up that tweet I got Diggs you. is Diggs not having that production isn't bad if Gabe Davis is pulling in six catches for 100 yards right. or Kincaid has seven catches for 86 and a touchdown like it doesn't matter if he's not producing if he's not producing and it's leading to others producing the problem is he's not producing and the overall passing offense is also struggling 